Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspire Advantage, where we help students get into medical school and other professional programs. And welcome back to another episode of MCAT Bytes, where we make complex science topics digestible. Today, we're delving into the electrifying world of electrochemistry, focusing on the Nernst equation. This principle is crucial for understanding how electrochemical cells operate under non-standard conditions. Let's break it down because this is going to be incredibly important for the bio-biochem section. As you already know, the bio and biochem type questions on the MCAT account to up to 40% of all questions. And understanding non-standard conditions is going to be absolutely crucial for getting those points. So definitely you're going to want to make some good Aki cards on this video. Let's start with some core concepts here, which is going to be mathematically heavy. The Nernst equation, this whole thing here, enables us to relate the cell potential under any condition to the standard cell potential, ion concentrations, temperature in Kelvin, the number of moles of electrons being transferred, Faraday's constant, and R is just a gas constant, so it's not really going to vary. Essentially, this equation is a bridge between thermodynamics and electrochemistry. So you might be noticing some of these letters from, well, thermodynamics and electrochemistry. This is going to reveal how potential shifts with concentration changes. And something I want to point out here, Q, in case you forget, it's something I always flipped up in my head, but it's the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. So you can think of Q as telling you, are you left or right shifted within the stoichiometry of an equation, right? If Q is higher, it means we've got more products, meaning we're more right shifted. Whereas if Q is less than one, it means we have more reactants than we do products, meaning the left side of the stoichiometry is probably heavier. So why does this matter and what type of questions do you need to apply this concept to on the MCAT? Well, there are several reasons. One, it highlights how cell potential varies with ion concentration. Two, it demonstrates the temperature dependency of cell potentials. So we know that temperature does matter. And three, it integrates concepts like reaction spontaneity, gives free energy, and equilibrium constants into the realm of electrochemistry. So let's run through an example together here. Imagine a simple electrochemical cell. The potential difference between the two half cells changes at the concentration of ion varies. This variation is precisely what the Nernst equation is going to predict. So let's say we have a zinc copper cell. The stoichiometry and direction of the reaction are central to understanding why the reaction is driven in a particular direction when concentrations are changed. The fundamental reaction in the zinc copper voltaic cell is as follows. We've got our solid zinc, our aqueous copper, then aqueous zinc, and solid copper. I don't want to throw too many numbers at you, so we're just going to say that this is a spontaneous redox process where zinc is acting as the anode undergoing oxidation and the copper is acting as the cathode undergoing reduction. Stoichiometry is easy here where it's all just one to one. And the standard cell potential here is going to be 1.10. This indicates it's spontaneous. So now let's apply the Nernst equation to the zinc copper cell with the altered zinc ion concentration, reducing the concentration of zinc ions from let's say one molar down to 0, 0.00. Well, let's think about what this will do in terms of our equation. So we know cell under non-standard conditions, and let's just plug in that E value right away. Then we have RT, which we didn't say temperature is changing, so I'm just gonna leave that there. N isn't changing, it's gonna be two because we have plus two here, so that indicates two electrons are being moved. Faraday's constant is a constant, so that also won't be changing. Now we're taking the natural log of Q, which we said is the concentration of products over reactants. So let's find out where zinc is. Two plus is in the products. So that's what we're going to be changing. So let's just write that out. So we've got one molar there and one example. For the bottom, let's just put it as one because that's going to be easy math. It's an arbitrary value. And then we're going to do the same thing. And we're going to reduce that one molar down to 0.01 molar. And a property of the natural log here is that this number is going to be something negative. I think in this case it's about negatives. Whereas the natural log of one over one, that's just going to give us zero. So then we can say E equal on zero minus zero, or E equals 1.10 minus negative six. So the top one will be 1.10, the bottom one will be seven, one. Okay, so our E increased when we decreased the amount of zinc. This means that we are going to further shift the reaction to the right, increasing the cell spontaneity, making E value more positive than E standard. 
This shows the equation's power to predict changes in cell potential based on concentration shifts. For the MCAT, mastering the Nernst equation is vital. It not only appears in electrochemistry questions, but also in biological scenarios where ion gradients across membranes influence cell behavior, particularly across neurons. In medicine, this understanding is crucial for interpreting how drugs affect ion balances in the body. The Nernst equation is a cornerstone of electrochemistry, offering deep insights into how cell potentials are influenced by various factors. Grasping this concept will illuminate many aspects of chemistry and biology relevant to the MCAT and future medical studies. I recommend watching this video in concert with other videos we've made on Gibbs free energy and galvanic cells. By understanding and applying the Nernst equation, you're equipping yourself with the knowledge that is not only pivotal for acing the MCAT, but also fundamental in the medical field. Happy studying and stay tuned for more MCAT bites. I'll see you next time.